Welcome to my first YouTube video. I'm going to go through exactly what I carry out for my nature photography. I'm a nature photographer in Florida and I've been doing photography now since 1977 so I've almost been doing it 40 years. I used to use Nikons, I used Mamias for weddings, shot weddings for about 20 years. Now I do the photography I love to do so this is what I take along when I go out and do nature shoots. Okay, I'm going to jump right into it. First off, this is my Tamron 5723 Zuma 3 bag. This gets the job done. I only spent $15 for this at Christmas. Well, because this was an eBay special that Adorama was offering. You can't beat it for the price. It holds a ton of equipment, does a beautiful job. It also provides security for you because most people don't look at this as a camera bag which is great. You don't want someone stealing your equipment. I learned that a long time ago when a gentleman came in my shop wanting a photographic job. He had a horrible camera bag and pulled out a Hasselblad. He probably had $10,000 worth of equipment in there. Nobody would have known it. They wouldn't have touched his bag. Okay, so we'll get started here. My main go-to here is my Olympus EM5. This is the Elite version. I picked it up for $375 at B&H. Great camera. Most people don't need the latest and greatest. Save yourself some money, get some extra lenses. This body will do a great job for you. You also notice I have what I consider maybe one of the finest lenses Olympus has ever made, the 75 to 300. This lens gets the job done for me. This would be the equivalent to a 150 to 600 if I was using a regular Nikon type camera. This is incredible for me. You know, I used to have Nikons. Unless you spend the money to buy one of the 500 millimeter f4 lenses from Canon or Nikon, you're not going to get anything comparable. And for the price, this is a steal. When I tell people when I'm out in nature areas that are carrying the big, huge cameras that I only spent $400 for this lens refurbished, they just about pass out because their lenses cost thousands of dollars. They weigh tremendous amounts. If you drop it, you're in terrible shape. This is just such a wonderful lens. I use this for nature. I use it for uh, auto photography when, when I went to the Daytona 24 hour race. You can use it for street photography. Also nature photography. A lot of times you can't get in close because they'll just take off. A butterfly or a dragonfly, insects, lizards. This you can stand back, uh, back a little bit and still get the picture. So I just love it. So I'm going to lay this one off to the side and show you some of the other goodies in the bag. This is something I recently added. This is the Olympus 9-18 to lens. At first, I didn't know what I'd do with this lens. Now I can't live without it. This particular lens is great for you if you're doing landscapes, sunrises on the ocean. Also, if you're in tight spaces, like if you're going to do the Daytona 24-hour race or someplace like that, this lens is going to be able to do some incredible things for you. Grandstands, pictures, trailers, garage pictures. And also, this particular lens is relatively light, especially for what it does for you. I used to use the Rokinon 7.5 fisheye, but the reason why I stopped using this particular lens was it didn't give me the flexibility. This I picked up for around $200 on eBay, which is relatively inexpensive. But this is between five to 600 is the price that you'd pay for this on the street today. I spent 500. There's just no comparison the amount of flexibility but if you're on a budget, this can get the job done. This is what I took to Daytona this year for the 24-hour race because I couldn't afford to get this at the time. So just to keep in mind, you can make do with this lens and get a lot done. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the bag. Show you what else I have in here. Also, you notice I have a lens hood here. JC makes wonderful lens hoods. Look into them. The Olympus ones are great, but I just can't afford the prices for them. This is the 60 millimeter 2.8. I don't use this as much as I could because I was telling you on the 75 to 300. There's just so many times you can't get any close, but this is a marvelous lens. It can also be, also be used for portraiture. You're back a little bit further from your subject because you're 120 millimeter uh, Nikon equivalent. So it, it's a wonderful lens, but it's very specialized. So just keep that in mind. But you can just see how much I can get in this very small bag. Now here's one of my very most favorite lenses of all. The only fixed focal length lens I carry in my bag now. 
the 45 1.8. It's great for portraiture. I use this at the Daytona 24-hour race to get garage pictures that no other lens could have gotten because it's low light, it's extremely sharp. Just love, love, love this lens. I can't say enough about it. Notice I've got the lens hood on here too. Get the lens hood, you'll use this outside, you'll use it in the studio. There's just so many uses for it. Let me dig a little bit deeper. I'm gonna pull out the Plastic Fantastic. Most people here that automatically know which lens this is. This is the Olympus 40 to 150. It would be equivalent to 80 to 300 if you're using a, a full, uh, full frame sensor. Beautiful lens, nice and light, extremely cheap. If you don't have much of a budget, this should be your first telephoto lens. I mean, I could see, unless you're doing bird photography and some of the things that I do, you could probably get by with this lens and the 45 1.8. Not that I'd want to, but if I was on a tight budget, I could get these two lenses, get the Olympus EM5, and get the job done. Also on the Olympus EM5, there's still a considerable number of those cameras available. If you check out on eBay and other services, you probably won't be able to get it for the price that I did now. You're going to probably have to pay $500 for it, but it's worth every bit of it. Not taking anything away from the Mark II camera, but this camera you can get the job with, I'm done with. I would stress to anybody, it's not the equipment, it's the photographer. Concentrate on your art. Equipment secondary. Camera manufacturers aren't going to tell you that, but you can't be made a great photographer just by buying expensive equipment. I've seen so many people walk into my shops over the years who wanted a job in photography. They had spent tens of thousands of dollars in equipment and their pictures were horrible because they spent all their time studying equipment and buying equipment and not learning the art. So you can buy a $100 camera and take beautiful pictures or you can buy a $10,000 camera and do horrible photography. Your exposure will be perfect, but your composition could be horrible. So. Just to go into that to give you an idea of how I feel about things. Now, another little thing that's on the side here. These pockets are nice. And they totally use them for water bottles, but a mini tripod. Great idea. You can use this for doing your own little uh, videos. You can set your camera up on it, do a selfie with it. Uh, you know, it's also great for a little thing I carry along many times when I don't want to take my lens off my camera is a Yaomi Yi camera. It has 12 megapixel photos. It also do time-lapse photography. I've taken some beautiful sunrises with that particular camera. I would recommend adding that to anybody's camera system. It's the best $75 you ever spent. Check out eBay. I think Amazon has them for a little bit more. It ties right into your, uh, to your cell phone. You can control it all, do a beautiful job, do it remotely. Really worth your time. On the other side of the bag, I've got another thing for the Yaomi that I love. This particular stick will extend out. If you're out on a shoot and you got that little Yaomi camera, you can raise that up. You can get some incredible views of lakes, ponds, animals that you just couldn't get any other way. Then you fire the camera remotely with your cell phone camera. It gives me some incredible pictures. While we're talking about tricks too, you don't have to spend a fortune for software to do the things I'm talking about. If you've got an Apple computer, you've already got iMovie that can take care of the pictures. I'm going to edit this video today with iMovie. It's cheap and it gets the job done and it's easy to use. You don't have to spend a lot of money for it. You don't have to buy a subscription. Same thing with your software. I use Photoshop Elements 14 and I use the Nick Collection. You know, I spent a little bit for the Photo, uh, photo Elements 14, I think it was around $60, but now I own it. I don't have to pay a monthly subscription. To me, it's just not worth it to go out there and spend that kind of money. So be thinking about those things. Those are ways to hold your expenses down and still be able to do great photography. So as we go through the bag here, I want to give you a little bit more of an idea of what we can hold in here, what I take with me. I carry three batteries. That gives me the equivalent of carrying uh, enough power for about 1,200 shots the way I shoot. Uh, also, I carry a number of memory cards. I like to carry five or six. I don't like to put too many shots on a card because what if a card becomes corrupted? Always format your cards before every use. 
and download your pictures and put them in multiple locations. Things can happen with ransomware and various other things. Don't ever lose all your work. Also, you can back up to the cloud, but have a physical backup somewhere. And if you can, have a backup on two or three locations. It's just the smart way to do things. Uh, so that's an idea of what I use for my nature photography. Again, have fun with your photography. Don't worry about if you don't have everything in the bag here. You can acquire it slowly. I also want to give a shout out to the camera I'm using. This is being recorded by a Micro Four Thirds camera. Everything today I'm talking about is Micro Four Thirds or miniature. So this particular camera was picked up at Christmas time from B&H. For $600, I got a nice remote Rhodes mic. I got the 14 to 42 lens on a Panasonic G7. It does a beautiful job, I think. So that's the beauty of this system. These lenses will all work on that camera and vice versa. Now remember the difference between most of the Olympus cameras have built-in image stabilization. There's only one uh, Panasonic right now that I know that does. I could be wrong, but I think there's just one. It's the brand new one that just came out. But you can interchange the lenses. And I really do prefer the Panasonic G7 for video. It just does an incredible job. And that's what I'm using here today for this video. And uh, this was the first sh basic shooting in my video studio. So please forgive me if everything isn't perfect. If you got questions, feel free to, uh, free to throw them out there. I'm going to throw some pictures up at the end of this too so you get an idea of seeing the type of photography I do and what can be captured with this equipment. So good shooting and have a great day.